Good morning, I'm Latoya Montague. I am the Senior Director for Community Outreach and Learning Centers with Communities and Schools of Wake County. That's a mouthful. Um, but we're excited to be here and being able to share with you the great work that we're doing with the students in the community. Um, just out of curiosity, are there any gardeners in the room? Anyone who enjoys gardening? Um, educators, parents, and mothers? <laughs> well, guess what? By default, you are all gardeners. Um, I garden, and um, my husband, when I was rehearsing um, my remarks for today, I stated, I'm a gardener, and he goes, where? Um, and I said, well, no, I don't actually have vegetables and things of that nature, but with communities and schools of Wake County, we cultivate academic and student excellence. That's our cultivation, and that's the gardening that we do. We plant the seeds, and then we nurture, nurture, nurture the students and the seeds that we um, plant through our case management, and that's what case stands for, cultivate academic and student excellence. We do that process in 11 sites. We have five community-based sites. We have six um, school-based sites, and in each of those, it, we started as a plot um, about 20 years ago. We started a relationship with Wake County Public Schools. We have um, various connections with area corporations and businesses and faith-based communities that help us really get our um, mission out, which is to surround students with a community of support, empowering them to stay, to stay in school and achieve in life. Um, we are the nation's largest dropout prevention program. And based on a five-year study, we're really good at it. We have the strongest model. The Communities and Schools model is a very strong model for mitigating dropouts. So the way that we garden in this community here is through our case management. And we look at attendance, behavior, and coursework success. So for attendance, it's important to be present. So we ask, we advocate for the students to be active in the classroom nine, at least 90% of the school year. Now, with any good garden, the more you add fruit and vegetables to your garden, sometimes you have to rotate your crops just to make sure that it's fer fertile soil um, and it continues to flourish. Um, originally, last, in 2009, 2009, we had about 249 students that we were working actively with. By the end of last year, we had 602 students that we were working with, and our goal for the end of 2012 is to have 1,600 students. So as we reevaluate and we begin to rotate our crops to make sure that our measurements are accurate, we're seeing that the absenteeism that we initially stated um, of eight days or le uh, eight days or less absent from school was not realistic because some of the pesticides that some of our new crops um, brought with them were excessive absences. So once we looked at the data of what we started with at 249 and we added in six, I mean, you know, doubling that population, we noticed that we had an excessive amount of absenteeism, so we had to recalibrate what our measures were. Um, so as we continue to grow our garden, we diversified. We started off with just tomatoes, but now we've diversified with a lot of different initiatives. One of our newest initiatives is Operation Eligibility. That is intended to focus the student athlete on the student component of being a student athlete. So many times when students lose their eligibility to participate in sports, if they don't hear the whistle blow, they don't care about the class bill. Um, so what we really try to do is really give them life skills and that case management where we're making sure that they're aiming for a seat or better in the classroom to be able to really be competitive on the court and in the classroom. Um, as we diversify, we continue to grow. We also have the Powell um, Elementary Initiative, which is 21st Century. Um, 21st Century is how many of you work in groups or teams? In your, in your employment. How many of you ever become frustrated because people don't know how to work as a part of a team? Um, so it's really important that we begin to help implement those strategies at an elementary level. So at Powell Elementary, we have graduation coaches that connect with students there to do project-based learning. So instead of just doing fractions, one half plus one fourth, and just living through that, we bake brownies. And we use a recipe, and we make half as many brownies. We make twice as many brownies. So the students are more captured in the learning process because it's hands-on. Um, we also have alternative um, learning opportunities for students who are not being successful in a traditional classroom setting. So for example, um, we work with a group of students at Inlo this summer where historically um, for summer school, 
for those of us who, are, who know students who have been associated with summer school, it's not a fun time in the summer. You don't want to be there. But for some reason, something didn't happen during the course of the year to help you be successful so that you wouldn't need it. Normally, about 15% of their students who participate in summer school completed the coursework. This summer, through the guidance of our graduation coach, it was 85% of the students completed the coursework that they were um, there to do. And it was an awesome revelation for Enloe High School. Um, so again, we continue to add additional vegetables and, and, and fruit to our garden. Um, and we're always looking to really voice our Give Back to the Future campaign. And basically what that is, is that we're doing just that. The students that are here in presence today that we're helping are going to be our leaders for tomorrow. So we work really closely with them to make sure that we're communicating to all points that connect into their success, whether it's the classroom teacher, whether it's an, an administrator, um, and whether it's the parent. Um, um, ultimately, we want our goal to be that we have a graduation coach in every school in Wake County. We're also working with a very um, innovative program with Walmart where we want to implement um, learning centers and learning kiosks within 16 area stores. So as we continue to grow and we continue to include more people in our garden, we invite you, we invite your peers, we invite your network to be a part of our community garden. Thank you. What, what are you talking about with Walmart? What, what are you planning to do today? I'd like to have an opportunity to address that. I'm Travis Mitchell, president of Communities and Schools of Wake County. Uh, Walmart gives us an opportunity to touch a massive amount of parents and students. We know that at a particular Walmart location, they may have upwards of 25,000 K through 12 school age children to come through during a monthly period. So if you can think about the convenience that would offer, if a parent has an opportunity to check a child into a learning center in Walmart while they're shopping, in 10 minutes we can do a skill assessment through a partnership with SAS in reading and math. Print out, here's a printout of all of the, the service, uh, all of the remedial or accelerated programs within a five mile radius of where you live. And if you bring your child back on a regular basis and, and, and schedule an appointment, we have certified teachers and volunteers that can help with homework or basic skill development or accelerated track EOG special test prep. So Walmart Foundation has kicked in seed money and we're having partnerships. We have partnerships established with the local stores. We're in the process of identifying exactly which store we're going to launch the pilot program uh, this, this year. Um, can you talk a little bit more about um, your evaluation outcomes and you talked a little bit about changing your attendance criteria and that had a lot of uh, conversation in our grants committee. Can you talk a little bit more about the rationale for that and the impact? I'll give you a practical example. Um, as word about our effectiveness has spread, we have schools that have asked us to get involved and launch a program. In low for instance, we did not talk about. We started January 24th of this year. They sent us 17 students to our Kentwood facility that was built by SAS. Now they bused them to us for two hours during the day. These were 17 students who were failing in one to three courses. Now we did not know the profiles of the students because they did not want us to prejudge them. But when we began work, we realized that many of the, the students had tremendous or excessive absenteeisms. So we needed to get them to a place of understanding that attendance was a prerequisite for success, but it took a while to get them to understand that. So this was outside of our normal caseload of student, therefore we needed to develop a goal that really addressed where we were going. Many of the schools, and, and, and we think this is an important process, we don't want any of our coaches to look at a case file and predetermine that a child can or cannot succeed. So we go blind. A lot of times then we get into the process of nurturing and developing and we learn some of the information that comes out. And so we think that it's a good, uh, it, it's a reasonable uh, bet, if I could say that, that as we're moving forward in terms of service delivery in Wake County, we're going to see more cases like that. 
So what you're saying is that this may be a prerequisite um, uh, period of participation in advance of actually entering into the formalized CIS that, model. That is correct. And also Wake County, because of our success turning around students in North Carolina virtual public schools and summer school, is starting to send us long-term suspended students. Uh, but we are having a tremendous track record turning them around very quickly. So they're going to bring certain um, attendance issues with them. Uh, that we have to mitigate. Well, and also as a caveat to that, the no the benchmark for Wake County is 20 days. Once you miss 20 days, you're considered you could be evaluated to be failed just on attendance. So when we started to look to move the the marker, um, we didn't want it to go to 20, um, but we also wanted to evaluate the students that we had on our caseload and find what would be reasonable. Could you just tell us? Um, what our grant, if you received it, could do to grow your program? Um, I think that our learning centers is our biggest um, uh, asset right now in terms of um, we, we do a lot to have to fund those learning centers. Our school-based locations are normally under contract with Wake County Public Schools. Our learning centers cater to about 250 to 300 students who live in low um, public income, I mean low um, social economic environments and public housing communities. So we provide a graduation coach at five locations. We um, take away the obstacle of transportation because we're located there in the community. So um, we also contract in certified public t um, school teachers who are able to assist in the process. So that's our largest um, cost as an organization. So that definitely would, would be. So augmentation. Mm -hmm. And also we're going to have a greater need for um, new assessments online assessments and we're developing partnerships with SAS and IBM etc but we have infrastructure needs that we have to address that are just fundamental when our learning centers were built they were built on an old model of uh, old telephony analog systems we're in a digital age so we're all resources that we're able to acquire go to reestablishing and rebuilding infrastructure so that we can scale and sustain our effectiveness I'm sorry I had to step out for a minute how long a program do you feel like when you bring a kid into your attendance coach program, what is your timeline for beginning and then graduating them into the CIS general model? Well, uh, the a, a good pilot program is a good an academic year because we, we need to understand uh, where the children are and get an assessment of all the various needs that they have. Then we can match them with the appropriate resources. But we also, to, to answer that question more long range, we're looking at developing a feeder pattern by which we are able to offer a corridor of support. Ideally, we need to have graduation coaches K through 12. Now here's what we found. We can start working with a child and if there's a disruption in their living patterns or they move out, we lose track. But if we have graduation coaches spread throughout Wake County and a good system of data to track them, then they never fall through the crack. So we know where they are and we can manage them and monitor them. And then going back to the infrastructure issue, we measure our interventions. So if Johnny comes to us and we're mitigating um, attendance issues and we improve attendance, behavior, and coursework, it's not enough to get him to get caught up in coursework. If he's in the fourth grade and he's reading on the second grade level, we need to know that our interventions are moving him from grade two, 2.5, three, 3.5, and four. Now, if that data is in our system, that is a more long-term indicator of his future success. So his goal, or the goal you said, is he's got to get his attendance to a certain point, or he does not stay in the program? If we don't turn away students, mm -hmm. we stay with them. But we have got to make sure that we drill home that if you don't show up, you won't succeed. Mm -hmm. And the students have to meet us and the parents have to meet us. Mm -hmm. In some instances, I'll be frank, we are the surrogate parents. Mm -hmm. And so we won't leave a child unattended to. That's our job. Mm -hmm. But we have to hit point number one, you have to be there. Mm -hmm. Point number two, you have to behave. Point number three, you have to do your homework. Now let's take a look at what your basic skills are. And then another point, there's so many bright students who are not challenged mm -hmm. that we need to put them on an accelerated track. Mm -hmm. So it's really a multifaceted mm -hmm. approach. It is. Not just focusing first on attendance. You're working with them through the whole the step. Whole, yes. Okay. But it's just the central point is you have to show up.